to a company that absolutely knocked the freaking cover uh, off uh, off the ball here and that is that is pure storage i wasn't so you know exhausted i would have gotten up and swung like a baseball swing right there yeah you know? i would have i would have made it rain yeah i, I, I just rain. i love to see people crush their earnings right well i love to see yeah i love to see companies do well of course we had a great run of that during the pandemic um, and now we're starting to, you know, have to have some of the harder conversations, which sucks. You know, it's like if it keeps getting worse, but we're just going to stop covering earnings because we like to be the positive guys. You know, it's like, oh, I'm like, oh my God, what a disaster. <laughs> but, uh, you know, part of our job as analysts is we have to observe and analyze the market in both up and down in down directions. And, you know, we try to find the, the strengths and the goods and it buys how to how to help companies through all these different uh you know, gyrations and all this turbulence, but not a lot to advise here, just a lot of commending for pure storage. I mean, first of all, you know, this is a company that's been on that kind of precipice of being in the in the black. And this quarter showed a pretty significant uh, income, um, close to 80 million on around, um, uh, what was it? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm pulling 620 million gross in revenue. That was a huge growth here, over 50% growth. Which, by the way, when you start growing at that rate, when your you know run rate is two and a half billion, that's pretty impressive for a storage focused company. Now, this is a disruptive storage focused company, but last year they had a, a loss in this quarter. It's basically break even this quarter. They did like three hundred sixty thousand loss on four hundred million. This this time they actually did an eighty million dollar gain or profit. So that was super impressive. Um, you know, this is a company, by the way. I you know, what I love about Pure is is I. How does a storage company also become a CX company? And so somewhere in its DNA, right? And you know, you've, we've had Charlie Giancarlo, CEO of Pure, on our summit a few times. Um, but somewhere in the company's DNA, um, it became all about CX, customer service and net promoter score. And it, this thing is working for it. Basically, make our customers insanely happy in working with us, and we will keep growing. And that's what's happened here. So. Headwinds or no headwinds, companies are clearly spending more on storage because this is a company that, you know, saw 50% growth in this most recent quarter. And in a quarter where, you know, other storage providers saw growth. So it also goes to show, by the way, some of those tailwinds about infrastructure, storage, data, making data accessible. I mean, their Portworx portfolio is super interesting, right? Uh, Container-based solutions for making, for bringing storage and memory closer to compute doing it in a modernized uh, environment. That was a big acquisition for the company. And, you know, that's going to be a very um, promising uh, part of its story in the future. So that was another really um, good number for the company as well. You know, look, you know, they're, they're, they're not as big of a portfolio as a Microsoft. So you, you can be kind of in this bit of a lane. But you and I, have, you know, we've had these conversations with Micron, Pat, about memory, you know, here is kind of a conversation here about, you know, just how important is data and making data easily accessible, usable, uh, using, you know, modern technology so that when you're basically need that access to that data, you can get access. You know, Pure is really in it to be disruptive, to be easy to work with. Um, and the customers are basically telling the story here. Customers are raising their hand and saying, we want to work with, with Pure. And so, the, you know, I don't know that I need to, you know, expound upon this much more, but 50% growth during a sort of teetering economic moment for a company that's, you know, relatively small in this space in terms of size, but becoming ex an extremely big disruptive player to a lot of those legacy names. And it's going to be a company that I believe you're going to have to keep an eye on. Good stuff, Daniel. But, you know, I want to talk about, uh, I mean, they beat 20% on the top line. And yeah. Monument. Well, I know, well, I know they vacillate between uh, kind of profit and loss. I mean, the earnings surprise was 491 <laughs> percent. Um, pretty, uh, pr pr pretty, pretty uh, Im impressive stuff. And here is a company that, you know, Daniel, you talked about CX, right? And they are a software company that happens to do a little bit of hardware. And doesn't that doesn't that doesn't that sound familiar like Apple-esque, right? Where the magic comes in there. And did you, did you know, Danny, you can ride the longevity of, of, a, of a pure subsystem and you can get order of magnitude increases in performance 
with software upgrades. And that's the way they've done it. They built a chassis too, that if you need to replace the hardware, uh, it's a bladed, it's a bladed type of, of architecture. Uh, interestingly enough, so what they do is they put a, a fast enough backplane and they put a, a wide enough power range to be able to do that and actually do upgrades. And these customers actually do hardware upgrades in the middle uh, of that chassis. They were also the first major player to do storage as a service, right? Pure as a service. Ta-da, here we are. Uh, they were pretty much uh, in front of- Is that of, what PaaS stands for? Pure well, as a service? maybe them, maybe to them it does. But uh, yeah, by the way, uh, the storage folks are starting to use SaaS as storage as a service. And I'm like, no, maybe SaaS, okay? SaaS is all taken up, folks. So please don't uh, screw this up. So. I am calling it today. It's not SaaS storage as a service. It's SaaS or pure as a service pass. Oh, uh oh, that's not going to work either. But uh, uh, anyways, um, and subscription services, they're also way ahead of the industry uh, on. You saw the uh, ARR at 29%. Subscriptions were up 35%. Anyways, th this reminds me very much of our Marvell conversation that we had uh that, uh, that, that we had last week. I don't know how to criticize this recent uh, earnings. They knocked out of the park. Yeah, you know, it's okay. You know, sometimes, you know, you're trying to find a, you know, you're find, trying to find a, you know, a, a pimple, you know, on perfect skin. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and they're just, it doesn't, it's not there. So, you know, they're going to have quarters and, you know, we'll have to snap back and say, oh, what happened? But, you know, right now, the momentum seems to be in favor. And I do think this has something to do with that transformation of buying behavior, going back to like the HPE discussion about the, see for pure, there's not a big transformation. Cause like I said, it is mostly an, <laughs> a service. So they're not weighing on the hardware. They're able to lean into the fact that, hey, you want a solution that you can subscribe to, OPEX, assumption based, by the way, and be really happy that you work with us because that's what we're focused on. You know, of course, I said that they're on this two and a half billion trajectory, Pat. Now we'll ask them, can they keep growing like this when they're on a 10 billion and then on a 15 billion? To be seen. Right. We'll see. You know, so far, a lot to like about.